Volcanoes are one of the deadliest and most dangerous things we have on our planet. Luckily, most of them are dormant and not able to harm us. Until now. We're going to look at what would happen if these super volcanoes suddenly erupted. But that's not all. We're also going to check out what would happen if one of the biggest volcanoes on Earth decided to explode. And then we'll explore what happens after the volcanoes erupt. We'll show you what happens during a volcanic apocalypse. This is one of the largest supervolcanoes in the world. And now it's beginning a massive eruption. But that's not all. At this moment, every single supervolcano is exploding all around the world. How many supervolcanoes would be erupting? What would it be like to witness so many eruptions? And would this be the end of life as we know it? This is What If, and here's what would happen if all supervolcanoes blew up tomorrow. Before we get ready to rumble, let's just get down to what's so super about a supervolcano. These things aren't just big buckets of lava and ash. They're defined by their colossally huge calderas. These massive cauldron-like depressions can span distances as large as cities like Los Angeles, New Delhi, and Singapore. And when some of these supervolcanoes erupt, they'll spew enough rock and ash to cover entire countries in debris. So if they all went off at the same time, would you have anywhere safe to go? Our supervolcano chain reaction begins in one of California's most beloved national parks, Yellowstone. Known for its breathtaking geysers, this whole place sits on top of a massive supervolcano that could blow at any moment. This supervolcano would explode with a force about 2,500 times more powerful than the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. The sheer explosive power of this would be equivalent to nearly one quarter of a million megatons of TNT. And plug your ears, because this eruption would be loud enough to be heard across several states. Ash would blanket the horizon, and sadly, most of the national park's wildlife will die in the fiery eruption or its aftermath. Now, before the dust begins to settle on Yellowstone, another eruption will rock the west coast of the United States. This time, the Long Valley Caldera would wake up from its 760,000-year slumber. That ancient eruption was so powerful that it created the caldera that still exists today. That is to say, it created the one that existed up until a few minutes ago. Over 1,000 cubic kilometers of debris would burst out of the volcano, sending an unfathomable amount of ash and lava into the air. Next, far across the Pacific, Mount Toba in Indonesia would detonate with a deafening roar. Tropical paradise would turn into pandemonium, and millions of people live close to this volcano, so the death toll from the eruption would be devastating. People all around the world would be breathing in thick, hot, volcanic ash. Without a heavy protective mask, this stuff would cause you to choke and you'd be unable to breathe. But this isn't the first time that something like this has happened. The last time Toba erupted, 74,000 years ago, it was one of the most powerful blasts in Earth's history. The vast amounts of material it ejected into the atmosphere caused a so-called volcanic winter blocking out the sun and leading to a significant drop in global temperatures for the next several years. To round out our look at the chain reaction of supervolcanic eruptions, let's return close to the scene of one of history's most infamous eruptions, Mount Vesuvius. Its supervolcanic neighbor, the Compi Flagrei, would erupt and plunge the Bay of Naples into even more chaos. 2,000 years ago, Vesuvius wiped the city of Pompeii off the map. Today, this supervolcano would threaten the lives of more than 2 million people living in the metropolitan area of Naples. 
And if the epicenter of this eruption was underwater, well, your Italian beach vacation would be ruined by tsunamis as tall as 30 meters heading right toward you. Now, these wouldn't be the only eruptions happening around the world, but already the consequences would be disastrous. Cities would be plunged into darkness. Airports would ground flights all over the world. Even just finding breathable air would be a challenge. The chaos and destruction brought on by all these eruptions would make millions of people homeless. And the numbers would continue to grow as the effects of a volcanic winter settle in. With all the volcanic material in the air, our atmosphere would be filled with sulfuric acid, blocking out the sun. Crops would die, decimating food supplies and leading to mass extinctions of animal species. And just like in the aftermath of Mount Toba's ancient eruption, global temperatures would drop for several years. The one bright spot in this literally dark situation would be that this would significantly reverse the effects of human-impacted global warming for a while. And there would be hope that in the aftermath, civilization might join together to figure out ways to keep life going. Now, let's take a deeper look and see what would happen if the Krakatoa volcano erupted. On the islands of Indonesia, a geological beast is awakening. Krakatoa is about to blow. Again. How would you know this day was coming? How could this eruption make you deaf? And why could it be a good thing for our planet? This is What If, and here's what would happen if Krakatoa erupted today. It's August 1883 in Indonesia, and one of the most catastrophic natural events in recorded history has just occurred. Krakatoa, a volcano on the island of Rakata, has erupted violently sending enormous amounts of gas and ash high into the air. The explosion was so energetic that its sound traveled a distance about the width of the United States. Wow. Even though this volcanic island was uninhabited at the time, the devastating aftermath of the eruption led to a death toll as high as 36,000 people. And that's not all. It also caused a little climate change. So if Krakatoa were to erupt today, would it be game over for humanity? Before jumping right into the heart of this volcanic disaster scenario, there's one important detail you need to know. Following its eruption in 1883, a large part of the Krakatoa volcano collapsed into the sea. It kept erupting underwater, and that allowed the volcano to climb back out of the ocean, but when Krakatoa erupted back then, it was twice as tall as it is today. For today's Krakatoa to be extremely dangerous, it would have to return to its original size. So let's imagine a scenario where the 1883 eruption never happened, and this volcano would be a ticking time bomb, ready to blow. If you lived in Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, you'd be among the first to notice that uh, something was wrong. For months, you'd be hearing strange, dull, booming noises, followed by your doors and windows violently rattling. These booms would be the result of eruptions below the surface of the Indian Ocean, in the days after these booms, Krakatoa would start to blow up. Small amounts of ash would rain down as far away as southern India or Thailand. Closer to Rakata Island, where you could see Krakatoa, large volumes of steam and smoke would be rising from its peak into the atmosphere. Over the next few weeks, massive amounts of volcanic glass and molten rock would be ejected. This rock material would blanket parts of the ocean's surface around the island, and that would just be the beginning of the disruption to the fishing industry, shipping lanes, and to all life forms in the coastal ecosystem. 
Eventually, that tower of steam, smoke, and rocky material would get huge. The volcano would violently spew gas and ash as high up as 25 kilometers into the air. Yeah, impressive, but this portal to the underworld is saving its big show for tomorrow. The next day, this beast would explode with so much energy that its sound waves would circle the globe four times. And while not everyone on Earth would hear the noise, you could catch it in Australia. Yeah, even 160 kilometers away, the explosion would sound louder than a jet engine. Hopefully, you won't be any closer than that, because if you were too close, the bang would instantly rupture your eardrums. Following the explosion, the surrounding regions would be plunged into darkness. That's because all the volcanic ash that Krakatoa spit out into the sky would be blocking the sunlight for the next three days. But the worst would be yet to come. This massive explosion would cause the volcano to collapse. Large parts of Krakatoa would fall into the sea, triggering a series of devastating tsunamis. Millions of people in the surrounding area of Indonesia would be at risk of death. If you lived in Jakarta, you'd want to find some very high ground because a wave of over 37 meters tall would drench the capital. And people in coastal areas as far away as Hawaii and South America would be on tsunami watch as well. Now, if flights weren't already canceled, planes would start falling out of the sky. Visibility would be reduced to a minimum, but the big threat would come from the volcanic ash clouds. They can damage flight controls and cause engines to fail. The eruption would produce an enormous amount of dust and debris, so much that if it all fell onto one place like New York City, only the antenna of the Empire State Building would be peeking out. Indonesia and other parts of Southeast Asia and Australia would be devastated by all the ash falling onto their farmland. Many crops and livestock would struggle to survive in this ash-contaminated environment. Now, believe it or not, something positive might come from all this destruction. It could be a cure for climate change. Well, at least for a little while. When Krakatoa exploded in 1883, it lowered the average global temperature for several years. Plus, all that fine dust in the air would create some stunning views. For the next year, sunsets and sunrises would take on a spectacular red and orange glow and the sun and the moon would appear greener than you've ever seen them before. Okay, now that all these volcanoes have exploded, what happens next? A volcanic apocalypse. How much damage are we talking about here? What would life be like for the survivors? And what do you mean it gets even worse than lava? This is What If, and here's what would happen if a volcanic apocalypse happened tomorrow. Brace yourself, this may just be the worst weather forecast you're ever going to hear. Every volcano on Earth, active or dormant, on land or under the sea, is ready to blow the lid off this place. You can expect to see plumes of ash, lava bombs and jet spurts on every single continent and in every single ocean. But I know what you're thinking. You can take the heat, right? Well, take a seat there, Sparky. It's gonna get a whole lot worse. If every volcano on Earth erupted at once, it would set off some high-magnitude earthquakes. This is because so many volcanoes are located near the shifting tectonic plates of the Earth. And while the lava and earthquakes would certainly do some major damage, one of the biggest blows we're going to face is the nasty gases that spew out of volcanoes. 
clouds of gas, smoke and ash can travel in almost liquid-like motions to anywhere in the world. They could smother the Earth in a matter of minutes. But let's say for a second you managed to survive the initial explosions. Well, I've got two very upsetting words for you. Volcanic ash. The volcanic ash would black out the skies, blocking any sunlight in the process. This would cause the temperature on Earth to plummet. Without the sun, the Earth's surface temperature would plunge to zero degrees after the first week, and then to minus 66 degrees by the end of the first year. On the bright side, it's not an inferno of death anymore. To make matters worse, no sunlight means no plants, which means no food for animals. Most animal species would go extinct, as the loss of plants would set off a mass extinction due to its impact on the food chain. And don't hold your breath for the stragglers. You can expect acid rain to take care of them. This is because of those volcanic gases we mentioned earlier. Hydrochloric acid, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen sulfide, and sulfur dioxide would condense in the atmosphere, and they would fall to the Earth as rain. This would then contaminate any fresh water supply we had left. But what if we had some fighters still kicking? What would life be like for those living in the aftermath? Well, the economy isn't going to do you any favors. The volcanic destruction would cause a complete economic collapse. Every business and bank would shut down you'd lose access to credit and become instantly unemployed. Unless you count being a wasteland survivor as your new job. It would be full-blown post-apocalyptica out there. Searching the ash-covered world for aquifers containing fresh water, venturing out into the wasteland for supplies, and living in heated underground bunkers. Now. While it is very possible that volcanoes could set each other off by being in close proximity, the chances of every volcano on Earth exploding at once is highly unlikely. But it does make us think about how quickly things can go south. What if we could prepare for something like this? What if we built the world's deepest bunker? Well. That's a story for another What If.